Hey guys, back again, and I want to apologize ahead of time if the video quality is not good, or at least not um, different to what I usually have. I am sorry, I'm going to try and fix that um, pretty in due course, but as of right now, this is all I have to work with. I don't think it's bad, I just think it's different, and that, that might throw some people off. But let's move on to um, the topics of the video. I have been kind of out of the loop as far as some of the stuff going on in wrestling is concerned. Um, the reason for that is um, things have finally started to happen for me as far as the college course that I want is concerned. So I've been kind of taking care of some stuff on that end and I haven't really felt any real eagerness to talk about some of the stuff that's been happening in wrestling lately. So I kind of want to group it all into one video. Um, so a lot of this stuff is kind of like a quick opinion and then then move on. So that's kind of, kind of what I'm going to do in this. Um, as you see in the title, there will be news stories, there will be some match ratings, and there will be some hype and a quick preview for Noah's new navigation 2010 in Tokyo, which will be tomorrow. Um, the, this will be the last show that they promote as a 10th anniversary show and there are some stuff to get excited about on that show so that's what we will do um, at the end of this video um, but as far as right now let's talk about some news stories the first one being Adam Pearce leaving um, Ring of Honor as the head booker and leaving the creative reins of power to Delirious um, I don't know exactly what Delirious will bring to the table as far as creative goes as far as his style of booking and how much change he'll want to bring to the table but, so I could be very wrong in my prediction of what this will mean for Ring of Honor, but I would say, as of right now, I think this will be a smooth transition on the whole for Ring of Honor, just because Cornette is there, and Cornette still has a lot of influence, and has had a lot of influence, to the point where I think the entire direction of the company won't change because Pierce is leaving. I think that there will be a smooth road um, on the whole, because Cornette is kind of like the glue that's holding everything together. It's not like it's not like when Gabe left and there was a very big starting over atmosphere in Ring of Honor. You know, I don't think there was a very chaotic atmosphere, but I think there was a starting over atmosphere that came from Gabe leaving, and I think that there won't be that big of uh, an adjustment for everything as far as Ring of Honor is concerned, because you know Cornette has been there; he's been kind of having his influence, and I think that will um, kind of keep everything on a smooth road. Um, the thing about it is, though, I think the fact that Tyler is leaving will kind of make it appear as though there's a lot of chaotic uncertainty happening in Ring of Honor right now, but you know, that's due, due to the fact that Tyler is leaving, not due to the fact that Pierce is leaving. That's kind of my um, thoughts on, you know, what's going on there. Uh, I don't think Pierce leaving will leave a big um, adjustment to be had in Ring of Honor. I think there'll be some noticeable changes, but on the whole, I think that, um, you know, Cornette will kind of keep things heading down a smooth road. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, then we come to the main event of Glory by Honor 9, which will be Tyler Black defending the Ring of Honor World title against Roderick Strong. I have to agree with Sanders Robin on this. This is just not very interesting to me on the whole. You know, just not a very intriguing match to have as your the main event of your of your biggest show or biggest well one of your major shows. Um, you know, I would agree with those who say that you know Roderick should win the title as a face, um, not just because it can produce a feel good moment and an emotional moment, but because. I don't think that Roderick is cut out for a long title reign, and if he's going to have a short title reign, it would just work so much better as a face, because, you know, if you're a heel and you have a short title run, it just, it feels a lot more pointless than if you're a face and you have a short title run, there'll always be some emotional value, there'll always be some um, good stuff to get out of a short face title reign, not always the same for a heel title reign, so that's kind of like uh, my point I'm making there. Um, so I don't think Roderick is cut out for a long title reign because he just doesn't have a lot of the qualities um, outside of the ring. You know, he can't have an interesting feud. Well, he can't, he's going to find it hard to have an interesting feud. He's going to find it hard to do, do a lot of his stuff um, outside of the ring. You know, inside the ring has got him as far as he's got now, but he doesn't really have much of the qualities outside of the ring to um, keep things interesting. I would say so. That's kind of why I'm. Um, against against him having a long title reign and as a short title reign, a face is just much better suited. So that's kind of my opinion. I don't think he should win. I think he might win, but I'm not going to be um, too optimistic about the prospects of that if it does happen. So you know, um, I'm going to be interested to see what they do with what they have with what they with what they have because they don't have, really have a lot to work with right now. So it will be interesting to see what they do. I hope they make the best of what they have, but I'm not really have a lot of optim optimism right now for the Ring of Honor main event with Tyler leaving. It's just not, just not the best time for him to be leaving, to be honest. So 
it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, that's as far as news stories go, as, as far as I want to talk about. Now let's move on to some match ratings. The first one being, um, actually both of them are going to be um, two out of three falls tag team matches, and one of them people will be very familiar with. The other I haven't seen much people much people talking about. Um, one of them is from Noah, and one of them is from TNA. The TNA one being Motor City Machine Guns versus Beer Money, and the Noah one being Takashi Segura and Kenta versus Takeshi Morishima and Go Shiyazaki. I wanted to put these two together because they are both two out of three falls tag matches and there's an interesting comparison to be made. Um, let me say this, I give both of them the same rating. I think the Noah tag is the better um, wrestling match, but they get the same rating because I think TNA did a great job of making their match feel important. You know, Motor City versus Beer Money was a very flash bang style of match with a lot of flashy moves, and while that's like fun, it doesn't really ha it doesn't really have a lot of replay value, but TNA made it feel like a great spectacle with all the replays and all the fireworks afterwards and all that kind of stuff going into it. And I think that's th I think with that kind of promotion, the style of match actually worked in that context. You know, TNA made a gr did a great job of promoting the match within the show, and the style of match kind of fit the way TNA promoted it. So I think that kind of adds some marks to the match overall. Um, I give TNA credit for promoting that well, which they don't they don't normally do. So. Um, you know, props to them for that. Um, but as far as the Noah tag, go, Noah tag goes, it was the better of the two matches. Um, the Noah tag had a lot of great interactions between Segura and Morishima. And you know, this goes to one of my problems with Segura in the ring. I think he's capable of having a great match, but there comes the time where you know um, he needs to be as aggressive as possible to bring out the best in him. And there's a lot of ho opponents that kind of. There's a conflict of styles because they don't let him. They don't let him be that aggressive, and that's kind of what you know. They ha you can have great matches, but they can often be better if he's allowed to be really aggressive. That's why I would say his best match this year has been against Yoshihiro Takayama um, during the Summer Navigation Tour. I think it was on July 11th. Um, they had a really brutal, bloodthirsty style match, and that's where Segura excels, in my opinion. That's that's what he's best at, I would say. So that's quite kind of why I think that was his best match this year. Um, this match, he had a lot of interactions with Morishima. Um, you know, this goes back to Segura needing to be as aggressive as possible to bring out the best in him. And I think Morishima is one of the best guys to bring that out in him. That's kind of like the highlight of the match for me. Um, seeing those guys um, interact with each other, that was just awesome for me. So I think they both are great tag team matches. Um, I would say the Noah tag was more enjoyable on the whole, but they get the same rating because, you know, TNA did do a great job of promoting the match within the show, and I would give them some credit for doing that, and that kind of brought up the rating of the Motor City um, Beer Money match. So, there is that as far as match ratings goes. Then we get to the last topic of the video, which will be Noah's New Navigation 2010 in Tokyo show. This will be the last show that they promote as a 10th anniversary show. Um, for your last show, you want to really deliver. For your last show under this banner, you want to really deliver. And as I said in my review of the Osaka 10th anniversary show, I think this show should be better than that one was. And I hold Noah to that. And I think that this card has the potential to surpass what came before it. Just some matches here that are very intriguing to me and I think can really deliver a great um, overall show. We're starting, well, I'm not going to do the whole card, but I'm going to do the matches that intrigue me the most. Starting with Kenta versus Atushi Aoki. This could be one hell of a match because here you have Kenta who we should expect the best from him and the best from him is usually pretty damn awesome. And then you have Aoki who, you know, he had a very good match with Devitt um, on the New Japan Soul tour you know it wasn't great i don't think i don't I th some people thought it was great but i really um see that in it but there was enough good in that to make me think that you know aoki is capable of having well, obviously you know any most people are capable of having a very good to great match with kenta so you know this could be a great match in my opinion you know you know um enough of these guys to tear it up and see what they can do and see you know if they can have a great match so i'm looking forward to that one um, then we get to um, Kensuke Sasaki versus um, Tanaguchi. This has good this has this has good potential as well because this could be a very good pure heavyweight match. You know, as far as I'm concerned, Sasaki was in the best match of 2010, bar none. Um, I hold myself to that. I still think I, my, my belief in that has not diminished in the slightest. And you know, Tanaguchi had a very very good match against, against Segura in, at the at the same show. I didn't think I didn't think it was great. Some some people thought it was great, but I didn't think it, it was great necessarily. But with their best efforts in there, I think they could they could work a very good, very almost great, I would say, um, heavyweight style match. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what those guys can do together. And that's another 
possible highlight of this show. Um, then we move on to the match that I'm most looking forward to myself, which will be a New Japan vs. Noah interpromotional match, and Go Shiyazaki vs. Shinsuke Nakamura. These guys fought on the last night of the G1 Climax tournament. That night is still unavailable to watch because it was, as I understand it, it aired on pay-per-view, which means that it will not be available for another while longer. Um, but, but with tournament limitations as far as time goes, this, that was that match was probably just a taster of what we're going to get here. You know, Shigesaki again. He's been in my best match this year, my match of the year um, for 2010. And out of all the New Japan guys, I say my two favorites right now. Well, not right now, but overall, are Hiroshi Tanahashi and Shinsuke Nakamura. You know, earlier in the video I talked about how Segura's style of aggressiveness can sometimes limit him against certain opponents. Um, Nakamura has some of those, you know, aggressive attributes, but I think he makes it work in almost every situation, you know, because of his look, because of his in-ring presence, because of everything about him complements what he does in the ring. And that really stands out to me. Um, the stars align for him almost, I would say. You know, that's kind of what makes him a great talent in my mind. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do with um, Shiyazaki. These guys definitely have the emotional capacity to deliver a very um, heated interpromotional inter match. I would say this is the match that I'm most looking forward to myself. It might not be the match of the night. It might have to compete with the next match, the main event, to be the match of the night. But I'm most looking forward to that one for sure. Um, Shiyazaki versus Nakamura. Then we get to the main event for the GHC Heavyweight Championship. This is the Takashi Segura defending against Jun Akiyama. These two had a match back during Spring Navigation on the 2nd of May. In my opinion, that was 4 and 3 quarters. Not 4 and 3 quarters, 4 and a quarter. 4 and 1 quarter. Um, the thing is about that match, you know, with a show of this importance, they realize they have to go out there and top that match. They need to go out there and do something better than that match. And I think they can do that. I think they can have a better match, and this could be something very special if they do have a better match. So I would definitely say that this could be the match of the night. This could be something very special. This could be um, on the top 10 of matches of the year. So look out for that one as well. So I would say that this, uh, sh this is a show that you definitely have to keep your eyes open for. You know, I'm not sure if it's airing on pay-per-view, but I would imagine that it is, in which case it will take about a week and a half for, at least for it to appear online. So it probably won't appear online until then, but keep your eyes open for it. I'll definitely be reviewing it if it's something worth talking about. Um, so watch out for that as well, although it definitely won't be the next video I do. I still have some stuff to talk about next, but as far as this video goes, I'm out. Later.